Hey everyone, Joe here. In this video tutorial, I want to show you how you can start streaming to Twitch through OBS. I'm also going to give you the settings that I use to stream as well. So that being said, let's hop over here to OBS and start setting it up. Okay everyone, so I have OBS opened up here on the desktop. Now your uh, things may be out of order different from mine, and that's because I have moved mine around. Over here I have my scenes, scene transitions, as well as my stats, because I like to view the stats. And I also have my audio mixer right here, which you can see no audio sources have been added yet. And my controls are over here, and I also have my sources here in the same location because I don't need to mess with the sources if I'm streaming. <laughs> Alright. So this is how I've got mine set up. Uh, before we get into any more depth than on this, we need to actually go into your settings. Now you have two options, uh, two different ways to go into the settings. And that is click on the settings button here, or go up to file and go down to settings. Let's go ahead and click on settings. Okay. So we're at general here. We get your stream here. We'll come back to this later. Output, audio, video, hot keys and everything. Let's first go to video, and this is really going to uh, determine, you know, how you want your uh, setup. If you're running, say, like 1080p and you're doing card games and stuff, then 1080p, about 30 frames per second, will work just fine. However, if you're doing fast-paced shooter games where well, 60 frames per second is uh, more ideal, then we want to change this. Now, the base resolution here for the canvas. It's currently set to 1920 by 1080. I'm actually going to lower that down to 1280 by 720 because you really want these to match. You know, right? because if they match, then it uh, just looks better overall when it's streaming to Twitch. Downscale filter. I really use uh, either Bicubic or Lanskos. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, I like the Lanskos better. And since we're now going to use 60 frames per second, I'm actually going down and choose to 60, 59.94 because that matches my display. And most of your displays are actually 59.94 and not true 60. So go ahead and click 59.94. Okay, once you get those chosen, hit apply. And now let's go up. Well, I just go down to uh, advanced first. Okay. By default, a uh, direct 3D uh, 11 for render is what you want to use. Color format NV12 is correct. Color space 709 and color range you want to make sure is also impartial. Okay, you can scroll down here to the bottom and for this network, I like to go dynamically change bitrate and also enable the network optimizations. Now, the reason I do this is in case I'm streaming and per se, I may have my bitrate set to about, you know, 4,700. And if it happens to tank down as far as my bandwidth going to Twitch's server down to like 4,400, I won't get disconnects. It'll just slightly lower the quality of the video until the actual network get, uh, comes back up. So... That's what I choose. Bind uh, to IP to leave the default. And once you get that done, hit apply. And let's go back up here to opt uh, output. All right. By default, uh, default mode, uh, output mode is set to simple. Now I'm actually going to change this over to advanced. I recommend you use advanced because it gives it a lot more options. And you got a few options here. You got streaming, recording, audio, and replay. So audio, uh, recording here, audio. And replay buffer now i'm not going to touch on recording and replay buffer for this video as it's already going to be too long so i'm just going to focus on streaming and the audio okay audio track i recommend to leave it set to number one twitch vod track you can enable this if you know what you're doing but for this video i'm not going to cover it because that's a total different video altogether but uh the tldr that allows you to send different audio tracks over to twitch in case you want to remove say the music from one of your uh tracks whatnot that way you only have the game audio and you that way it kind of help with uh you know in case you want to use other music that might not be you know how can you say approved for you to use <laughs> that'll help you get around that so anyway i'm not going to cover that in this video but i am going to go back over here start talking about the encoder and this is where you need to choose uh which one you want to use now but default this the encoder this x264 is cpu so it will use your cpu to encode now if you're using an nvidia graphics card like i am the nvidia encoder is uses the gpu which is also much faster and doesn't use uh your cpu resources amd also has one uh, to use uh, you want to use it uh, and never use us uh, 
you know CPU on unless you have no other option because it's also going to be uh, you know taking part of your uh, your uh, game as well. So if your game is very CPU intensive, it's going to have to share resources with the encoder, and the encoder uses a lot of CPU power. So it's best to use the NVIDIA encoder when you can. Rescale output mode, leave that unchecked and ignore it. The rate control, uh, leave it set to constant bit rate. I want that set there. And by default, uh, Twitch recommends, say, 4500 for 720p, 60 frames per second. However, I am not going to use 4500. I am going to use 4700 because that's what I normally use. Now, you can check and see how much uh, bandwidth you get to uh, go into your Twitch servers and stuff. And there's a little program you can uh, called Twitch Test that you can use to see how much bandwidth you're, uh, you can get streaming to their servers. But, you know, for like me, I kind of need about 6,000. So 4,700 is good in case the, the network can, uh, gets congested and the bit rate starts tanking. Now, also, this bit rate is not your final bit rate. You also have taken the account of your audio bit rate. So it'll be 4,700 plus also whatever your audio bit rate is. That said, 4,700 is what I recommend uh, for uh, 720p, 60 frames per second. It's also a really good one. So if you want uh, 1080p, 30 frames per second, you can also use it. So you won't want to use 1080p, 30 frames per second if you're doing card games, something slow, that nature. Uh, but if you're using like, you know, fast paced shooters, MMOs, stuff that nature, 720p, 60 is the better option. Keyframe interval, by default, it's set to auto. However, I write to set mine to two, and that's what I recommend. Preset quality high, yes. Profile high. Look ahead, turn that on, yes. Psycho visual tuning, turn that on as well. These will help keep your uh, you know, video and everything looking really good, especially if your uh, network starts going crazy. GPU, by default, it says zero, which everybody is gonna be using zero unless you have to happen multiple GPUs in your, uh, in your gaming rig. So if not, just leave it on GPU zero. Max B frames needs to be set to two also. Once you get that done, click apply. Okay, now we've got that done, let's go to audio. Now audio by uh, default can uh, desire on 160, which you see here, and it can go up to about 320 for Twitch. Now, I'd rather use 192, and that's what I recommend everybody just to use 192 on all their tracks and that's because i uh, say low quality is say not really low quality the lowest quality anybody should ever use is like 128 160 is a good medium 192 is actually really good however it's not too large and if you go up to say like say 256 or 320 256 is actually really high and really good crisp clear you're not going to hear any kind of artifacts or anything and 320 is just complete overkill. So 192 is what I recommend for the audio settings. Once you get that done, hit apply, and you're good to go and just hit okay on that. Okay. Now to get that done, let's go ahead and add our little scene here. All right, so I'm gonna click on sources to bring up my sources. And here's where we could choose a few different options here. Now we can use display capture, and this will record your desktop. So if you wanna do a like other things that might be on your desktop, record your desktop for other reasons or whatnot, as well as your game, then display capture is the one to go with. However, if you're worried about uh, accidentally capturing your desktop for security reasons, you just want your game captured, you can choose game capture. Now I'm just gonna choose display capture for, cause that's what I use uh, and I don't have anything on my desktop or game open at the moment for, to actually demonstrate game capture. So let's just click on display capture and create new name display captures i'm gonna leave it as for this tutorial and once you get that done you can see it popped up here and you can choose which display you want i got two different displays here and the 2560 1440 is the one i want to use okay click okay now we can see that this red line here you can see my mouse cursor and all of these little striped lines over here that's because our window is too big we want to shrink that down and we just pull on the little red line here on the corner until we get it on the screen. And you can snap it in. And boom, now I've got my desktop locked in. Now you can see it looks like an infinity mirror. That's because it's showing the desktop, which I'm actually recording at the moment. 
you can lock it in to make sure it won't be moved now. And that's pretty much it for the uh, caption, the desktop part of it. Now I'm going to hide that because it's annoying and just click on this image here and let the image be fine. Okay, everybody. Now it's time to go over to Twitch and get your, uh, your streaming key. Okay. So you want to go to the creator uh, dashboard, create account, obviously, if you don't have one already, then you want to go down to settings, stream, then go over to where it says primary stream key and click copy. Once you get that done, come back in into OBS, go to file, settings, stream. Okay, now we want to click on use stream key. Click that and go ahead and click paste. Okay. Now here's where you need to choose what server. Auto says recommended, but I don't actually think we need to be using auto. What I recommend is actually uh, testing these out and see which one works the best for you. Currently, Singapore here in Asia is the one that works the best to me. So that's the one I want to choose. Okay. Once you get that done, go ahead and click apply. Okay. Once you've clicked apply, go ahead and click OK. And now you're ready to stream to Twitch. Okay. And there's only one more thing you need to do is go in and set your audio up. However, I, that's for another video that I got coming out. And for the most part, you're ready to go down to where it says controls and go ahead and click start streaming to start streaming your gameplay to Twitch. Okay, everybody. So you notice I didn't cover any of the audio settings or uh, how to put your webcam on the screen stuff. Those will come in different tutorials. And I left those up to keep the, this tutorial from being too long. So just make sure you subscribe for those future videos. So anyway, that's it. That's the settings and stuff that I use in OBS. And hopefully that'll help you set yours up and start uh, streaming to Twitch. So look forward to more videos and stuff when I actually make videos on how to stream to uh, YouTube, as well as how to stream to Facebook. So anyway, hope you liked this video. If you did, how about give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please take time to subscribe. Subscribing's free. It's for you. and lets you know I'll release more videos. Until next time, everyone. Thank you for watching.